Really? Yeah. I didn't catch that. Yeah. Hey, one crew to another. What's up? <laughs> well, I tell you, it's a good day. It's Sunday night in Toronto, and tonight I'll be visiting the Air Canada Centre to see Paul McCartney live in concert. Uh, if there was ever such thing as a favorite beetle, I would like if you were gonna twist my arm and beat me up and make me pick a favorite beetle, I'd say Paul, but as Bill Maher once said, a real Beatles fan doesn't have a favorite. But uh, I'm just on Wellington Street. Me and my dad are gonna get a bite to eat before we go. So uh, my father and I, this is actually the dude who uh, was uh, the reason why I'm here. And uh, let the truck go by. And uh, him and I, we've always had a common interest in a, uh, a, a little known uh, English group from the north of the country known as the Beatles, both big fans. And uh, a member of the Beatles has decided to go solo, and he'll be playing tonight at the hockey arena. And uh, we're, we're both quite looking forward to this. Very excited. Exactly. Where's the light at? Here we go. So, question number one, my good sir, yes. is uh, what is your favorite solo McCartney album? Boy, um, just hold, you gotta hold it out and you frame yourself in the picture. Okay. Oh, there you my go. favorite McCartney album. Um, it's gotta be um, Band on the Run. Really? Yes, absolutely. Oh, well. Now, I feel the Band on the Run is a fine album. But, but, but I hear I, a butt coming. That's right. I, I go Venus and Mars on that one. And everybody loves, everybody loves Venus and Mars, it's a great album, but just personally, Band on the Run. How can you get any better than Paul and Linda on the front cover doing, doing that? That's true. See, for me, it's the, uh, the the because I once had a friend who tried to go track for track down the line, mm -hmm. and uh, and just tally up like what's what's got the the bigger collection of big songs and mm -hmm. good songs. But I said you can't do that because that doesn't account for the experience of the album as a singular work. What do you have to say about that? I want to change my mind. <laughs> to what? Best of. Best of. Best of. I don't know if best of counts in these kinds of questions. <laughs> it does in my books. We'll, we'll let it fly for the sake of today. All right. Okay. Now, um, would you call yourself as big a fan of Beatles solo work as you are of the Beatles as a group? No. No. No, I'm not. Um, very big fan of uh, McCartney solo. Huge fan of John Lennon solo. Uh, but you just can't stack it up against the Beatles together. You just, you just can't. That's true. Now, I once heard Bill Maher say that if you're a true fan, why am I recording my bad side? I have no idea. Let's go back around here. Yeah. This is where we're at. Hand it off too big a ridiculous thing. Um, I once heard Bill Maher say that if you're a real fan, you don't have a favorite Beatle. What do you have to say about that? Um, I, I, well, I, I don't agree. John Lennon is my, my favorite Beatle, my favorite solo artist. Um, and uh, I hate to admit it, but I, I, as a Beatle, I like Ringo Starr. But, um, you know, as a band, they click together well. But you got to have a favorite. You have to have a favorite. It's like saying you can't have a, a favorite ice cream. They're all ice creams, but you, gotta, you have to have a favorite flavor. I think that's a very astute way to put it. Now here's something I'm very, actually, I'm very curious about, and I don't know that I've ever asked you about this. In all of the years we've spent knowing each other, I don't think I've ever asked you this question. Now for me, I come to the Beatles as um, a finished story, as something that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And, uh, and I can get into it on that level, but you were there for it while it was happening. So you coming at it from that perspective, why do you think it went as big as it did? Why do you think it's still as popular as it is? I think it's still as popular because it's people like me that have followed them all the way through. Yeah, they, they came up at the right time. I remember being in grade four and, and playing, pretending you the Beatles on, on the front porch of the house with the, the pot and pan lids, the drums and the brooms, the guitars, and, and people from my generation have, have, have cherished that memory, they keep that memory, and they, the only way to keep that memory alive is through the Beatles music. True. I remember one time when I asked you what you believe uh, was like the quintessential, the most important Beatles album, and your response was Beatles 65, and uh, you looked a little brokenhearted when I explained to you that wasn't act technically a Beatles album. It was a, a, a Capitol Records um, compilation, essentially. Yep. But uh, so you obviously have fondness for that record. I, I do because it's just it's an album that came out. I think at the right time for me when I was really getting interested in music and and really enjoyed the Beatles. That's when it, when it came out, and that's why I still hold it dear. Cool. Now we can watch movies about uh, about Beatles and documentaries and whatnot, and it makes it sound like every little thing that happened was uh, was uh, you know the biggest thing to ever happen and was this earth-shattering event. But 
um, they were kind of out of the limelight for a lot of years at the end of their uh, of, of their you know time together as a group. So when they broke up, was it like earth shaking news, or was it just kind of like an item at the bottom of the page in the entertainment section? I don't, it, it definitely was not earth shattering news. It was it was sad for a lot of us, but I think people were expecting it. There was rumors of it happening for a couple of years, and they had I think they, together they had really kind of peaked with their creativity. So it came as no surprise. So was it uh, like, would it have been the kind of thing where it's like, you know, interrupting the TV, whatever's on TV, we interrupt this program for a special news bulletin, or would it just been kind of like, you know, the story that's in the entertainment report? I think it just came through as a story in the entertainment report, and right. you know, by the way, the Beatles broke up. Right. Because uh, at that point, there was still the, you know, it could still happen that they would have got back together at some point. Yeah, absolutely. And so I guess in 1980, in December of 1980, when John Lennon uh, uh, took his uh, farewell voyage, that was really what closed it and made us realize that the, the story's over, I would think, hey? That was the end of it, absolutely. That was the, the first people to die was a, was a closing chapter. And I think that's why it hit us all so badly, because we knew then the Beatles could never get back together. Up until that point, it was always the hope after that, Done. All right, so let me just uh, check the time here real quick. It is uh, 6.35. 6.35. Is it about time to go uh, get the tickets out of the car? We are going to go in the car, put the camera away, get the tickets, and go listen to McCartney for two and a half hours. Yeah, we can't take you guys with us, unfortunately, to the concert, but we can sure tell you how good it was after. Absolutely. You'll be hearing from us. All right, let's go get the tickets. All right, let's go. Do you remember the time I was on that game show on YTV? I do. I, that, yes. I think that was one of my first experiences uh, in the entertainment world. <laughs> and I remember they called me a ham, and I thought that was a. I didn't realize they were talking about my mannerisms on camera. I thought they were calling me fat. No, they were calling you a ham, and I was calling you a jambon. <laughs> I remember that. Which one's yours? Uh, right straight over here. All right. So I'll put this, uh, my. Get. Ooh. The tickets out. Zoom Ooh. in on these. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Zoom in on these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll look at where it says 19th row. That's very exciting. Wait, but look where it says <laughs> look where it says $250. <laughs> now you didn't actually shell out for that, right? You had connections. Uh, connections, yes. Oh, right. Well, this will be very exciting. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we're going to put the camera away because we can't take it to the arena, unfortunately. I'd love to have you join us for the concert and show you the whole thing. It would be the world's longest YouTube video if I could. Unfortunately, I can't. So the camera's got to go in the car. we got to go to the arena. we got to take in the show. And then you'll see us all excited about how awesome it was. Uh, for us in a few hours, but for you on this cut. Okay, and we're back. How did you enjoy the concert? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Three hours of Paul McCartney. You could not ask for any more, except <laughs> perhaps one more hour. One more hour would have been fun and we could have been watching. I mean, he's got enough uh, classics that he could go for another couple hours if he wanted to. He's got a very large library <laughs> to draw from. And there's not a one in there that would, uh, that would disappoint. Any uh, particular favorite surprises? Uh, yeah, Day in the Life leading into Good Piece of Chance. That, well, I was going highlight, to say the same one. The night, I was going to say the, the same one. And the, the, the crowd getting up and chanting and throwing out the peace sign. Yep. Very much in the spirit of, uh, uh, of the whole thing. And uh, uh, 68 years old, and that guy's still hitting the notes on Helter Skelter better than anybody at any karaoke bar in the city. 68 years old, three hours, barely breaking a sweat. Yeah, it's pretty wild. And did you notice that he's wearing a white shirt and there was no, not a sweat stain to be found? A little bit under the arms, but uh, hey, for 68, he's doing all right. I didn't even notice it <laughs> under the arm at all. But uh, yeah, in all sincerity, Dad, thank you very, very much for hey, taking me to the concert. My pleasure, absolutely. And uh, you people out there, maybe next time we'll get to take you along. But for right now... You missed a good show. You sure did. And uh, I'll be, we'll, we'll both be sleeping well tonight after rocking out pretty hard. Absolutely. So, uh, Dad, I'll see you very soon. And you out there, I'll see you tomorrow. See you later. <laughs>